much. What happens is this, okay? If you take question three, and in question three, you'll see that it's, it has a line and a curve, okay? So the line is y equals x minus three, and the curve is y equals x squared plus three x plus two. Now, if I was to enter this into this here, okay? You could draw the line and you go y equals x minus three, as you expect a straight line from that when you draw it out. Now the next one is y equals x squared plus three x plus two. You've drawn them in the past, they're a U-shaped curve. Okay, you can put it into the calculator and do the function mode of it. But if I was to draw this out, look what happens. Y equals x squared is a plus two plus three x, isn't it? Plus two. Now, what is it? T. Say, so, oh t. Okay. Now, what we have here is two distinctive graphs. Now, what you notice about the graphs? They don't cut each other, okay? They don't intersect. Now, in the past, what would happen is you'd have a line, okay? And what happens is you'd have a line that would cut the uh, axis. And what you'd do is you'd solve the equation and you'd get two answers for x and two answers for y. However, in this question here, you can see that the line simply doesn't cut the graph. So there's no answers for where both of them have the same points. Now what we have to do is we have to go about proving this, okay? So to go about proving this, you don't have to draw the diagram at all. The diagram is just to show you that they don't intersect, okay? Now to show you what happens is, okay, when they intersect each other, the y values of the points have to be the same at the same point in time. Basically, they have two points in common. So there's two different ways. The first way is you always get two letters, you always get a letter on its own. This is what's called the linear equation. The linear equation has no squares in it and it has no x multiplied by y. It has no x squared, no y squared, and no x multiplied by y. You always go to the linear and get one letter on its own. What you notice, it's already done for you. There is already one letter on its own, which is perfect. So y is on its own. Once you get a letter on its own in the linear, you then sub it into the quadratic. So we're going to replace y here with x minus 3. So we're going to have x minus 3 equals x squared plus 3x minus 2. Bring the minus 3 and the x over to your side. We're going to get 0 plus 2. So bring the x, square, x over to your side. We're going to get x squared plus 3x minus x plus 2 minus 3. What's going to happen is it's going to be x squared, 3x minus x is plus 2x, 2 minus 3, minus 1. Sarah? Now, as said at the introduction, you're going to do the minus b formula. And when you get the minus b formula, to prove that it doesn't intersect, if you've got answers like this, x equals 2, x equals 3, y equals 3, y equals 2. If you've got answers like this, these are what's called real numbers. That means that there will be two points at which the line intersects the graph. However, in this question, what we're going to do is we're going to prove that the answers are complex answers. And if they're complex answers, it means that the line doesn't cut the graph. So that's what we're going to go about doing. We're going to do the minus B formula. So we're going to get A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals minus 1. We're going to put into the minus B formula b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and what we should get is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 1 all over 2 times 1 you're going to get minus 2 plus or minus that's going to be the square root of uh, that's going to be 4 plus 4 which is square root of 8 square root of 8 in your calculator is 2 root 2 okay so it's going to be minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 2. Now remember what, oh sorry, mistake there, sorry, excuse me. Shh. Sorry guys, just give me a second with this. Shh. Sorry. Mistake made there, now the reason why I knew I was wrong was I wasn't going to get a minus answer in the brackets and that's how I knew I was wrong. So it's actually plus three 
okay and that gives me uh, the plus five and that gives me the C as plus five now that's how I knew I made a mistake because if I didn't get a negative answer if I didn't get complex roots I'm in the wrong exercise okay so basically that goes into five now we're gonna have four minus we're gonna have four minus twenty square root of minus sixteen what's the square root of minus sixteen four i now guys Shh. minus 2 plus or minus 4i all over 2 so x is going to be equal to minus 1 plus 2i or x equals minus 1 minus 2i Wri write down a quick note at the end roots are complex therefore line doesn't intersect curve are you happy with that? Now, there's only one other type of question they can ask then, okay? And the other type of question is this. It's very similar, except there's an, uh, it's gonna be, just these ones up here, okay? There's gonna be an X squared and Y squared involved. So, for example, what happens this time is, shh, this time, the equation here represents a circle, doesn't it? Now, does anybody remember the equation of a circle? x squared plus y squared equals r squared this means that these circles are located at a center of zero zero and it has a radius of root 30 okay Sir, yeah because you know, it's an x squared plus a y squared okay. okay it was x squared only it'd be a curve right. now what happens is it's a circle anyway guys okay so you have a circle and what we learned in the past was we had a line that would intersect it twice and we get two proper answers. However, in this section, the, the line isn't going to be going near the circle. So there's no points of intersection. So what we do is we solve which is the linear and which is the quadratic, okay? So this one here is the linear. Uh, y equals uh, eight minus x. The circle, or the quadratic, is x squared plus y squared equals 30. Now, once again, like last time, substitute the linear into the quadratic. So what we're going to get is this. We're going to get x squared plus x minus 8 squared equals 30. Now, please don't make the most obvious mistake. Write it out twice, and don't be lazy about it, and then multiply it out. Okay, so we're going to get x squared plus 64 uh, minus 8x minus another 8x and then at minus x by minus x is plus x squared. Bring the 30 over the other side, minus 30 equals 0. Okay, then we're going to get 2x squared. We're going to get minus 8x minus 8x which is minus 16x. 64 minus uh, 30, 34. Now, you can do it right away if you want. You could do the minus b formula a equals 2, b equals minus 16, and c equals 34. You could do that. You get the correct answer, no bother. What you know is about all the numbers though? They're all even. And because it's an equal sign, we have the other side, so it's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 17 equals 0. Don't even attempt the reference number because you know it's a minus b formula. A equals 1, B equals minus 8, minus B therefore equals plus 8, C equals 17. Put it into the minus B formula, we're going to get 8 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 8 squared minus 4 times A times C. Shh. Okay guys, now, what happens here is all over 2 times 1. It's going to be 8 plus or minus the square root of, now that's 64 minus 68 which is the square root of minus 4 what's the square root of minus 4? 2i so 8 plus or minus 2i all over 2 finally the answer is going to be 4 plus 2i sorry 4 plus i and 4 minus i once again roots are complex uh, line doesn't intersect intersect it's a circle this time, isn't it? Circle. Okay. Uh, these ones, guys, number 16, okay? Shh. To do number 16, part one is you got to show that it's this. So what you got to do is you got to multiply 2y plus 15 by 2y plus 15. Do it out. 
by multiplying out and prove that it equals this side. Once that's done, what you're going to do next is L is the line, this line here, C is the circle. You get either X on its own or Y on its own. How would you choose which one you get on its own from this equation here? It will be the X because you get Y on its own you'll end up with a fraction. So get X on its own and you get X equals 2Y plus 15. Repeat procedure, substitute, replace X with 2Y plus 15 squared. Multiply it all out and get the minus B formula and if it's a complex root it doesn't intersect. Okay? The numbers x and y are such that when they are added together the result is 4. What is the two, the two of them added together? How would you write that down? x plus y equals 4. When they are multiplied, what does multiplied mean? x multiplied by y equals 13. So guys, once again, pick a letter to get on its own. So if you get y on its own, it's 4 minus x, and once you do that, substitute in 4 minus x for y, multiply it out, get the minus b formula, prove that it's a, a, a complex root. Uh, sorry David, x plus y are two numbers, when you add them together you get 4, x plus y equals 4. When you multiply the numbers, that's x multiplied by y equals 13. Finally, last one. Numbers A and B are such that when they are added, the result is 10, but when they are multiplied, the result is 29. Same deal. A plus B equals 10, and then A multiplied by B is 29. All right, I'm not going to give you them all. I'm going to give you 16 and 17, okay, for homework tonight. And I'm also going to give you, uh, have a look at this here. I'm going to give you three. Three, six, three, six, nine, thirteen, fourteen. Six, nine, thirteen. Did I give it to you then? Thirteen, fourteen. And this is on page. That's it's on page uh, seventeen. Okay. Sorry guys, still uh, on video, page 7 in.